Who killed Elizabeth Short? The enduring unsolved mystery of the Black Dahlia murder. In 1947, the butchered body of Elizabeth Short was discovered in a vacant lot outside downtown Los Angeles. On a winter's day in January 1947, a housewife out for a walk with her child in Los Angeles stumbled upon the gruesomely mutilated body of a young woman later identified as 22-year-old Elizabeth Short and nicknamed the Black Dahlia. Her murder launched a mystery that hasn't been solved in 75 years. So, who are the top candidates for the real Black Dahlia killer? Though the murder remains unsolved, investigators amateur and otherwise have come up with a list of suspects over the years. The Black Dahlia suspects include doctors, gangsters, and even a legendary Hollywood director. Upcoming next, look through the evidence and decide for yourself if any of these seven Black Dahlia suspects could have committed perhaps the most infamous murder in American history. George Hodel the womanizing doctor who may be the Black Dahlia killer. For Steve Hodel, a former LAPD detective, the idea that his father, George, may have killed Elizabeth Short started with a hunch. While looking through George's belongings after his death, he found a tiny photo album that contained the photos of a dark-haired woman a woman who bore an uncanny resemblance to the Black Dahlia. As reported by The Guardian, Steve started to dig into his theory and came up with some compelling clues. His father, a doctor, would have had the skill necessary to slice the Black Dahlia in two. His handwriting seemed to match letters to the police and he appeared to have purchased bags of concrete shortly before Short's death, which matched bags found near her body. And when Steve published a book about his findings, Black Dahlia Avenger The True Story, in 2003, a Los Angeles Times columnist found even more evidence as he fact-checked Steve's story. According to The Guardian, Los Angeles Times columnist Steve Lopez asked the Los Angeles County District Attorney for more information on the Black Dahlia murder, they sent over a number of old files, among which Lopez found George Hodel's name on a list of suspects. What's more, Lopez found that the police had even bugged George Hodel's home in the 1950s. On February 19, 1950, the recording device picked up a woman's scream. Later, it recorded George talking on the phone with someone and telling them realize there was nothing I could do, put a pillow over her head and cover her with a blanket. Get a taxi expired 1259. They thought there was something fishy. Anyway, now they may have figured it out, killed her. The doctor added supposing I did kill the Black Dahlia. They couldn't prove it now. They can't talk to my secretary anymore because she's dead. But George Hodel ain't the only compelling potential. Black Dahlia killer out there. Leslie Dillon and Mark Hansen, two of the prime Black Dahlia suspects, one theory about the Black Dahlia murder posits that it wasn't one person who killed Elizabeth Short, but perhaps as many as three. Author Pew Eatwell argued in her 2017 book, Black Dahlia, Red Rose, that the murder was carried out by Leslie Dillon and Jeff Connors at the behest of a Los Angeles nightclub owner named Mark Hansen, as Eatwell explains, one of the first clues about the Black Dahlia murder came shortly after Short's body was found. On January 24, 1947, the Los Angeles Examiner received a number of Short's belongings in the mail, including her birth certificate, social security card, and a number of photos. The bundle also contained an address book with the name Mark Hansen on the front. Short had allegedly stayed a couple of nights with Hansen, a nightclub owner with friends in the LAPD, before her death, and Hansen had allegedly pursued the aspiring actress, though Short rebuffed him. Two years later, the LAPD seemed to get a break in the case when a man who called himself Jack Sand called and started to make claims about the Black Dahlia case. He said that a man named Jeff Connors had killed Short because Per Rolling Stone, she threatened to reveal an affair not considered proper by the average person. What's more, Sand, whose real name was Leslie Dillon, knew details about the Black Dahlia case that the police had kept secret 
and he just happened to have worked for Mark Hansen in the past. Though neither Dylan nor Connors nor Hansen were ever charged, Eatwell suspects that the three men worked together to kill Short. She believes that the men killed her at the Astor Motel, where Dylan was staying, and where the motel owners later admitted to finding a room covered in blood and fecal matter. Around the time of the killing, witnesses also remembered seeing a dark-haired woman there, as well as a man who looked like Hansen. But none of the three men were ever charged with murder. Hansen himself seemed to shrug it off when discussing the Black Dahlia murder in 1971, saying, According to Fox News, she just asked for trouble. She probably went too far this time and just set some guy off into a blind, berserk rage. The gangster and the newspaper publisher, who may have killed Elizabeth Short, while George Hodel, Mark Hansen, Leslie Dillon, and Jeff Connors are compelling candidates for the Black Dahlia killer. One author claims that there's another duo who may have killed the young actress. Donald H. Wolf wrote in his 2006 book The Mob, The Mogul, and The Murder That Transfixed Los Angeles, that Elizabeth Short was murdered by the gangster Bugsy Siegel, at the request of newspaper publisher Norman Chandler. Why, as Wolf tells it, Chandler, the publisher of the Los Angeles Times had a brief sexual relationship with Elizabeth Short, and when the aspiring actress got pregnant, he enlisted Siegel to kill her. Like Steve Hodel, however Wolf came up with his theory, based more on a hunch than hard evidence. As he explained to The Guardian, Wolf grew up knowing a man named Uncle Vern, who worked for the gangster, and Vern seems to have suggested, over the years, that Siegel could have had something to do with the infamous Black Dahlia murder. Until Wolf's work, Bugsy Siegel hadn't been considered a Black Dahlia suspect. The gangster had risen to power in New York City before moving to Los Angeles in the 1930s. He infamously poured millions into the Flamingo Hotel in Las Vegas, helping to jumpstart the city's growth before being mysteriously murdered himself on June 20th, 1947. But Wolf says that it's Siegel's implausibility that makes him such a good Black Dahlia suspect. Siegel and Chandler were so powerful, he said, that the LAPD helped them to cover up the murder. I found that if you understand the times and you understand the players, it was very plausible, Wolf told The Guardian. The public thought that the LAPD gangster squad's job was to arrest the criminals in Los Angeles but their real function was to protect the criminals who were making the payoffs and arrest those who weren't. George Knowlton, the man whose daughter thinks he was the Black Dahlia killer, like Steve Hodel. Janice Knowlton also thinks that the Black Dahlia killer was someone close to home her own father. George Knowlton, Janice detailed her theory in the 1995 book Daddy was the Black Dahlia killer. As Janice wrote in her book, she started to remember things she believed she'd suppressed in the late 1980s. Her father was long dead, but Janice began to recall him molesting her and a disturbing memory of him murdering a young woman she knew as Aunt Betty. Janice claimed that she saw her father beat Elizabeth short to death with a claw hammer at their family home in Westminster, California when she was just 10 years old. What's more, she wrote that George forced her to accompany him as he disposed of the Black Dahlia's body. But most have discounted Janice's claims. Her own stepsister called Janice's book trash. She believed it, but it wasn't reality, Jelaine Emerson told the Los Angeles Times. I know, because I lived with her father for 16 years, he could be meaner and ornerier than heck. But he wasn't a killer. Though the Los Angeles police are aware of Janice's claims, they came to the same conclusion. The things that she is saying are not consistent with the facts of the case John P. St. John. An LAPD homicide detective told the Los Angeles Times in 1991 that said Janice and her co-author Michael Newton insisted that there was evidence tying George Knowlton with Elizabeth Short. They claimed that the police had a suspect named George who drove a tan car just like George Knowlton and a man who dated one of Short's roommates, allegedly described a man he met named Georgie, 
whose interests and background eerily matched Janice's father. But George Knowlton doesn't seem to have been a serious black. Dahlia suspect except to his daughter, who died of an overdose in 2004. Robert read Manley the last person to see Elizabeth Short alive. Shortly after Elizabeth Short's body was discovered on January 15, 1947, police tracked down the last person believed to have seen her alive and married, red-headed pipe clamp salesman named Robert Red Manley. As Manley told police, he first met Short in late 1946, when he struck up a conversation with her on a street corner. He said I asked her if she wanted to ride. She turned her head and wouldn't look at me, he said in a 1947 interview reported by the Los Angeles Times. Finally she turned around and asked me if I didn't think it was wrong to ask a girl on a corner to get into my car. That auspicious beginning was the start of their relationship, and when Short needed a place to stay after the holidays, she sent Manley a message and asked him to pick her up. Manley and Short stayed in a hotel together chastely according to Manley and then Manley drove Short to Los Angeles. According to the Los Angeles Times, Short had lied and said she was meeting her sister at the Biltmore Hotel when her sister hadn't shown up by 6.30 p.m. On January 9th, Manley left Short at the hotel to go home to his family, though police considered him a Black Dahlia suspect. Manley passed a polygraph test, yet he spent the rest of his life struggling with his mental health. The Los Angeles Times reports that his wife had him committed in 1954 because he was hearing voices. That same year doctors gave Manley sodium pentothal, which can allegedly make people more truthful, and asked him about the Black Dahlia case. Manley stuck to his story. Robert Manley died on January 9, 1986, exactly 39 years after he left Elizabeth Short at the Biltmore Hotel with a cloud of suspicion still on him. Walter Bailey, the surgeon who may have killed Short, in a fit of rage. Despite the Black Dahlia suspects considered over the years, LAPD detectives long suspected that Elizabeth Short's killer was a skilled surgeon. After all, someone had expertly cut her body in two. And Los Angeles Times columnist Larry Harnish believes that Walter Bailey was the doctor. Who did it? When Harnish started digging into the case in 1996, he found some unsettling connections between Bailey and the Black Dahlia murder. As explained by the Washington Post, Bailey's daughter knew Short's sister, the doctor, had an office near the Biltmore Hotel, where Short was last seen and her body was dumped a block away from Bailey's ex-wife's house. What's more, Bailey seemed to match the profile of Short's killer, drawn up by FBI profiler John Douglas. As Harnish wrote, he was desensitized to blood was comfortable with a knife and although he had a medical degree he did work with his hands rather than his brains. He also had a strong but troubled link to the immediate vicinity of the crime scene. Harnish believes that the doctor fresh from a divorce and suffering from undiagnosed Alzheimer's disease may have cross paths with Short somewhere near the Biltmore Hotel. After spending a few days together Harnish suspects something happened to incite Bailey's rage. Possibly Short rebuffed him. Possibly she told a lie she told before about having a son who had died at a young age. As History Collection notes, Bailey actually did have a son who died at a young age, and Short's body was found two days after the anniversary of his death. The kicker. Of course, is that Short's body was found a 45-second walk from where Bailey's ex-wife lived. Harnish contends that it's possible Bailey dumped her there to terrorize his ex-wife. Orson Welles, why some suspected him as the Black Dahlia killer. Of all the Black Dahlia suspects listed here, perhaps the most surprising one is also the most famous acclaimed director and actor Orson Welles. Mary Passios discussed her theory about the famous filmmaker in her 1999 book Child Who Shadows the Hidden Story of the Black Dahlia, Murder, Pasios, who grew up with Elizabeth Short in Medford, Massachusetts started researching the case. 
to dispel myths about Short being a sex worker and a nobody. According to Solanher, research led her to believe that Wells could be behind the Black Dahlia murder. Wells see his name came up a few times. Pasios told Solan of how Wells kept appearing in her research. It was just his name kept cropping up. Pasios believed that Wells may have had a condition called the phasic personality a disorder often attributed to serial killers, in which someone can become violently aggressive when frustrated. She also points to a magic act that Wells performed in the 1940s, in which he pretended to cut women in half and mannequins Wells designed with a mutilated face, like shirts for the lady from Shanghai 1947. Though the mutilated mannequins were not used in the film Pasios pointed out that Wells designed them three months before the murder. When Pasios was asked how her theory might damage the memory of Orson Wells, she was indignant. Well, the whole thing is nobody cared about Elizabeth Short's memory, Pasios told Solon. You know, nobody cared, and I feel I agonized over it. I feel these are facts, everything is factual, people can draw their own conclusions. In the end, the Black Dahlia suspects on this list are simply that suspects, to date no one has ever been charged in the murder of Elizabeth Short, and that's what makes the Black Dahlia murder one of the most fascinating and unsettling unsolved homicides of the 20th century. So viewers, this was the horrible story of Elizabeth Short. If you like this story, please like this video and subscribe my channel for more amazing horrible real stories. And do not forget to press the bell icon. Take care of yourself and I meet you in a new video.